Here we are today with another episode of The Clever Dev, and today we're going to look at the MUI SX prop. We're going to create five different examples of the MUI, or of the breakpoint in the MUI SX prop. And so you can see, obviously, that layout changed, but here we've got a badge, and the color changed, in case you didn't notice it. This is a button, and the outline, or the border on it changed. So um, we'll, we'll go through that. Really, it's pretty simple to work with breakpoints within the SX prop, and there will be a link to full code examples, uh, all the code that we're touching in here, creating in here. You'll have a link to that in the video details, so definitely check it out. Here we are again, and I have a setup, a basic setup done, and uh, we're going to transform it into that mobile responsive layout that we saw. But as you can see right now, it's pretty ugly. We've lost our width, and um, there's no responsive styling here. These are just all in one row. We've lost our colors on our badge and on um, our button outline. We only have the primary main. We don't have anything special. So let's take a look at the basic code that's here. So we have a stack that's wrapping these examples. The first example, the one that's going to be uh, mobile responsive with the layout is a box that wraps papers. So these paper components are the three that the three components we saw initially. So they will get some nice wrapping on them and we'll also give them background color, different colors at different breakpoints. And um, we also have our badge here that's gonna get that styling on it. And we have a button. So I've got the I've got these objects in the SX prop, but these objects don't have any any responsive styling on them yet. So far, just like a border, so that you can see the paper components and a little bit of margin, stuff like that. Um, and just as an aside, this max content for the badge. Uh, the reason I need that is because my badge is on a button, and the button is within an SX that is taking the full width of the screen. Interestingly, uh, the badge doesn't really get the right width it doesn't get the width of the button it gets the width of that stack and so anyway uh not a great thing there but that's uh that's how that badge component works so uh with that said then let's dive in immediately into the styling here for that layout to get that some mobile responsive on it so what i'm going to use is i'm going to use flex on the actual paper components and it's important to note that i have this box component wrapping them that has display flex, of course, um, and then flex wrap with a value of wrap on it. So both of those are critical. You may know about display flex if you're going to use a flex layout on a child component, um, but the parent component, if you want the behavior that you're expecting for mobile responsive, you're probably going to want to put flex wrap on it as well. So with that said, let's go ahead and add our flex value. So when we are using the new uh, mobile responsive syntax, or really maybe it's better to say the breakpoint syntax, then there are a handful of breakpoints already set up in the theme. And so you can actually go and look at the theme object itself, or you can look at the documentation, um, or you can look at the blog post that I linked to in the video details, where I have a picture of that, uh, a link to the documentation and a picture of the values that are there by default. But anyway, so the syntax is that you actually access those values uh, I'm going to put an object as the flex value, and this object is going to have properties on it that correspond. They're kind of like shorthand to the fields on the theme breakpoints object. So it's a little bit confusing, but um, you'll you'll be able to see immediately just with the syntax how it's working. So I'm going to do something that's not going to work quite right. I'm just going to put that as 50% for now, um, and then I'll put a medium value on here. We'll talk through it and then I'll actually fix these because these aren't going to have quite enough width. So anyway, let's take a look at this. So already we're looking better and we're seeing pretty good, uh, pretty much what we expect, except that you notice that this layout, um, no matter how wide we expand the screen, that layout's not doing exactly what we want. We want it to be um, each on their own row. and that's just not happening. I'm sorry, I said that backwards. We want each to be, or we want them all to be on one row. So the reason that that's not happening is that I have this border here, and it's actually taking up a pixel. And so we have to account for that. And also we have margin on there. And this is actually another MUI system, as they call it, shorthand. 
So this one, if I remember right, it corresponds to a margin value of eight pixels. So this is margin, so that's actually margin top, margin right, bottom and left. So 16 total pixels there, plus two pixels from the border. So now that we've got our basic values in for XS, SM, and MD, and we've thought through this accounting for the two pixels of border and the eight pixels of margin on each side, right and left, so 16 pixels of margin. Now let's get those calc values in here that account for that pixel width. So I think it should calculate out to about 18 pixels, but I'm gonna put a couple extra pixels in. And let's give that a try and see how it's looking. So there we go, now that we've got enough, um, now that we're not taking up roughly one third of the width, but one third minus 20 PX for each of these, then we're getting this layout that we expect. So let me just shrink that down see what it's doing here there we go okay so that's behaving as we expect so that's the first of these examples the next thing we're going to add on here is a border color and so border color is actually uh, the same breakpoint syntax where we're going to use these xs sm md or whatever values that we want that are pre-existing in the theme breakpoints value so even though uh, background color doesn't really intrinsically have anything to do with um, a mobile responsive design, uh, we can still access those props for essentially like a conditional rendering based on screen size. It doesn't, the syntax isn't like question mark and colon and so on, but you're essentially doing a kind of conditional rendering. So let's get blue for that excess value. Let's get red for that SM value. And for MD, we'll do yellow. So that all looks good. Sometimes VS Code can just be a little slow with its hints, but that's looking good. So you see how we can use those breakpoints for more than just an actual layout or design. Um, so one more thing that I'm gonna do is the font size, and I'm gonna do this one just a little bit different. Um, I know that these aren't too different from each other and so maybe not quite as exciting but we'll do some more interesting ones here in a minute but what I want to show with this one is that you can actually do um, you can skip breakpoints of course and just access um, like I've got XS here and MD here and uh, this is actually a good time to talk through what's going on what the shorthand really means so I mentioned this is XS what that means is that from 0 to I believe it's 599 pixels this value will apply and then the SM value will kick in. Except in this case, we don't have an SM value. So this XS value is just gonna stay in place all the way up until we hit whatever the pixel value, the, the screen width pixel value, this MD value um, signifies. So I don't remember what that one is, maybe 1200 PX or something like that. So anyway, keep an eye on the font size and notice that it's not changing as much as the colors. So here we've got, we already went from our largest, our 32px font size down to our 16px, but then we stay at that 16px. We don't go any smaller than that. So um, kind of an interesting thing to note there. What I like about these breakpoints and this syntax is it's honestly um, easier to conceptualize um, because there's, there's less syntax options. Um, with if you're just using pure breakpoints in JavaScript and CSS, you can you can choose okay, and am I going to break below, break above? Um, if I have an MD value, I could say this MD value applies until it's hit from below or until it's hit from above. So um, using just the system and the theme values that are in place, it simplifies things, and in my opinion, makes it easier to conceptualize and work with these breakpoints. So the next one I wanna show is this badge. What we're gonna do with that is we're going to use a breakpoint inside of a nested selector. So the badge is kind of interesting. Let me actually pull up the DevTools here. And what I care about showing you here is how slow my computer is, no, just kidding, um, is that the span is actually composed of, or excuse me, the badge is composed of two spans. That's why I had to have that max width on there. Um, this span 
wraps whatever the anchor element is, in this case the button. Um, and then within that we actually have a second span that's also wrapped, that's a sibling of the anchor element, that button. This inner span is what, what's actually generating the visible text of the badge. This outer one's for positioning. So what we need to do is we need to target the appropriate class here if we want to do the appropriate color styling um, on our badge. So what we need is the MUI badge dash, dash badge class. So I will get that here. And that's all it is. That's all the class name is there. And then I'll add some background color just to make it a little easier to see. I will not do that as mobile responsive, but we could if we just felt like it. So I will make the text color, which is just this color prop or color value in here, I should say. Um, I will make that mobile responsive. So there we go, that's that badge. So now you can see the values on there. So very small screens, that's getting this XS value that we see back here of yellow. And on the small screens, um, going from XS to SM, we see that it's changing to the blue text color there. And just for fun, I'll show you what happens if we hadn't wrapped it in that nested selector there. There we go. Not a good thing. We're actually giving a background color to this outer span. This is totally bonus. Nothing to do with breakpoints right here, but we're giving a value to this outer span. And uh, looks like the button's not taking... I can't tell, actually. Uh, it might be taking this color value, but I think it actually won't. But definitely it's taking that background color. Let's make it smaller and see. Yeah, so the button's still getting its own color from its default styling. But anyway, um, this is definitely not what we want, so I'm going to go back to our demo here. So the last thing I want to show is that um, we can actually use a hook called use media query and you can see I've got the import already set up right here so I'm gonna go ahead and uncomment that import so this isn't exactly what you're expecting for using breakpoints and the SX prop I'm gonna use this use media query hook to determine which SX object we're gonna pass to our XS prop so I'm gonna change this from button style to button style XS and I'll go ahead and put that in there so that that our linter doesn't get unhappy with me and I apologize I've got some allergies going on or something so now we can make another one that's button style SM and I'm gonna change this to secondary um, a little note here you can see that I've I'm actually directly accessing theme palette colors here the primary main and so these string values are kind of like the second uh, half of the dot notation syntax that we need. I think it'd be theme.palette.primary.main if we are directly accessing that object. But once again, we're using MUI version 5, SXProp, which has access to the system, I'm using air quotes here, that uh, material UI generated for MUI version 5. And so we have that shorthand there. It's pretty nice. So anyway, what I'm going to do here is, uh, before I put that in, I'm going to use this use media query, and I'm going to say, um, I'll make this const here, and I'll say is xs, then I'm going to use that hook, use media query, and the syntax is like so. Here we are using kind of more vanilla JavaScript-y syntax here. Um, you see... I'm using max width, that could have been min width, there's more options than there are just in MUI world. So um, now I've got this XS value, it's a hook, so it's going to just be dynamically updating as our screen size changes, so pretty cool there. And then I'm going to paste that right into here, and I will use that for, um, let's see, get my, con my object up here. So I will use that in this conditional styling, you could say. It's not conditional styling within the SX, uh, within one of these objects of styling. 
it's conditional styling, uh, kind of in a different sense of it, but still conditional styling, where I am evaluating this value here and just choosing which of these to pass into that SX value. So let's take a look at that. So this one might be a little harder to see. We've got our primary main, which is actually the default value for the outline here. And notice that I am using the outline variant, and I'm targeting border color here. So let's expand that. And there we go. As soon as we hit that MD breakpoint, uh, you can see that it's got the secondary main, which is a purple value. Um, if I hover over it, of course, it's still getting whatever the default hover styling is on the button. But uh, there we go. So anyway, that was five breakpoint examples. Really like MUI version five, really like the SX value. And um, I hope that this video was helpful.